You don't need to know this because you'll never have sex. I'm Damien Madron, a sex educator, a sex toy specialist. I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I have AEDS. I now get to talk about sex and disability all the time. Why should disabled people not have sex? There's still a massive stigma around men using sex toys. I feel like I'm quite beige in the, in the grand scheme of things. Disabled people have better sex life. Disabled people do in fact fuck. Today's guest, Damien Weatherold, is a sex educator and sex toy specialist. It's a great conversation to have today with Damien, particularly surrounding intimacy and disability and what the sex toy industry is doing for disabled people. I really do hope you enjoy this episode. I loved recording it and so much so we're definitely doing an episode two. So please sit back, relax and enjoy. Welcome to the Not Quite Podcast. I'm Charlie Randall. Let's get ready to rewrite the rule book. Welcome back to the Not Quite Pod. Today we've got Damien with us. Damien, do you just want to quickly introduce yourself, let everyone know who you are and yeah, a bit about yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Damien Weatherold. I am a sex educator, a sex toy specialist. Uh, I'm a wheelchair user. I have Ehlers Danlos Syndrome. Um, my wheelchair is bright pink, so most people are used to seeing me rolling around in a bright pink wheelchair with bright pink trainers on. Um, and yeah, it's great to have to be here charlie oh it's gonna be so good i mean we caught up during nadex and i think we stood there and chatted for about an hour at least yeah it it was yeah it was one of those ones so apologies in advance if this is a very long episode but i'm gonna do my best i'm gonna do my best to keep it keep it on a level um but yeah let's start off with like tell us a bit more about your your disability and how it affects you and your sort of day-to-day so i have um it was Danlos syndrome i have aeds which is predominantly like it's like you'll hear a lot of people talking about hypermobile eds and things like that mine's very similar but mine affects my hips a lot more and there's slightly other complications um i was diagnosed when i was 14 years old i often say i was lucky because you hear so many horror stories of people going for years without diagnosis i was i got one really young um, which has made life a little bit easier in some respects because you kind of know what's coming and but it's still hard to find doctors who understand at times um yep. i dislocate my joints very easily i uh, i struggle walking a lot now so that's why I, I use a wheelchair um and it just causes great fun when you're drunk or it used to in, in my teens i've you know been hyper flexible <laughs> it was great for the party tricks um until you woke up I'm the next day that now as i get older yeah it's 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 a really complex condition there's other things that are associated with it that i have as well but you know here we are we just got to kind of get on with it it's but yeah it's played for my strengths where work's concerned as well because i now get to talk about sex and disability all the time and it's it's yeah. great i think that's the thing is like me and you are very similar of like look we we've been dealt this car these cards and we can either keep bitching and moaning about it or we just get on and see what we can do to improve it for others and what we can do to just live as normal life as we can and yeah i think that's the thing that people expect because people expect you to be like oh woe is me i'm gonna be lock myself away and not go out and not do this not do that and while there are some people that are still coming to terms with their disability things like that a lot of us are very much like look we've just got get on with it <laughs> there is no two ways about it yeah like let's say i was diagnosed when i was 14 and i kind of i don't think i honestly dealt with it at first i just kind mm. of ignored it a little bit tried to go on with life caused me issues at school um i got kicked out of school because of my disability what? um <laughs> so when i was 15 i was yeah the first thing they did when i i started having problems dislocating my knee i used to do a lot of cross-country running and such and i kept my knee kept sliding out i kept ending in a heap knew something was wrong um and eventually when i was diagnosed with ads um one of the first things they did was put me on crutches um and one day at school i slipped down a couple of stairs while the floor was wet after it had been raining or something and the school were like mm, this isn't good we don't want you on the premises so i was asked to leave whoa um and the only Shooterage I could get was a primary school teacher that was supplied by the local authority, and that was doing my GCSEs. So 
I I was sat at home once a week. A primary school teacher would come and try and teach me stuff that she didn't know. Um, so that caused major issues. So I ended up having to do what extra the time fuck? at in uni. Yeah, it's mental. You wouldn't get away with it now. Like this is going back like, the... twenty years plus. But yeah, that's boy, that's crazy. That is crazy. Like for the fact that they they were like, oh, you slipped over on crutches. We can't we can't have you here anymore. It's like. You realize, their excuse, yeah, their excuse was that I couldn't go because I couldn't get to my classes. They weren't obviously there was a lot of stairs in the building, so they wouldn't let me just sit on my own because that was pointless. Um, so it was yeah. kind of you're better off being at home. And they just didn't want me on the premises. Really, it was crazy. That's crazy, that is crazy. Because now you think about it, you think someone breaks their legs, they're on crutches. That that's quite a. It's got in in the grand scheme of things, being on crutches is quite a mundane mobility aid it's quite a usual yeah. one it's one people go oh i know what that is it's not like you've walked in with like a height adjustable wheelchair that you're like yeah hey, this is me now yeah it's just that's mad that is crazy um, and then there was other people to... who would obviously been in the school on crutches but because i'd had this slip i'd probably i think i'd maybe damaged my shoulder or something at the same time but it's like hang on you've, you've cost me my last year of school basically um and it was it was a nightmare but we again, you just deal with it. Oh, you yeah. can. Um, yeah. It was shit, but yeah. It's it, it's just mad. And then they supply a primary school teacher. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like what? I oh just oh okay. I'm surprised. Yeah, I would. I think I would have lost my patience at that point. It yeah, and I kind of just rolled with it really. Um, and then went through college university which was a struggle because i i had a real blip on my health then but i just kept rolling with it and rolling with it just as things went on um and i think it was more in my 20s when i started realizing i was having more issues than i could just keep batting away and stop hiding because i went through i went through three years of uni and most people didn't know i had a disability because i hid it that well because i I had i only used to wear supports and braces most of the time then so i would have stuff hidden um and no one really knew what was going on and it was it was a good thing and a bad thing i i was kind of not ashamed of my disability but it was hard to explain to people when they can't physically yeah. some say something it's hard to explain yeah, yeah, what's going yeah. on but now i would say once i got to my late 20s it was like nah let's just embrace this now and yeah that's that's yeah i mean that's the thing is like that whole thing of your your condition is sort of starts off hidden and then becomes more and more apparent as you've got older so yeah that must have as well taken some adaption of oh i'm able to hide this then all of a sudden oh shit now i'm not yeah and and then when it came as you saw me at nerdex when it came to the wheelchair i was like right if i've got to use this thing it's going to be seen i'm not hiding so it's bright pink and it's like and I always used to be like this with my wrist supports and my knee supports. If I could get bright colours, there would be bright colours. Um, I don't see the point of hiding it. If if it's yep. got to be seen, it's got to be seen. So, yeah. It is mad. Like, this guy literally wears bright pink trainers and in a bright pink wheelchair. Like, he's bold. Like, <laughs> I I would not... No, that's not, that's not me. That's uh, Mr. Blue, Black. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not bright colours. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, I just, it gets so much attention in one way. Um, and, I, and I love that. I, it, I just find it really funny. And it's, my, my wife and I, we laugh about it so much because we can be wheeling around, say, like a shopping centre or somewhere like that. And it's, you'll see adults trying to stare but not look. Kids just stare and nearly fall over watching it. And it's, yeah. I just find it hilarious. So. And then you follow that up with, by the way, I I, I work in the sex industry. And they're like, wait, hold on. Wait, what? Wait, hold on. What? Oh, yeah. I, I, I can't shy away from anything, to be honest. <laughs> no, you got you just got to lean into that. And on that note, let's just dive straight into it. How the hell did you get into the industry you're in? So, to cut a long story quite short... Um, when I finished university, I did a degree in criminology and thought, right, what am I going to do? Uh, I wanted to be potentially do social work. And then they were like, oh, you've got to do more learning. I thought, no, I've had enough. And I did some promotion work for a football club. I was like a commercial manager for a non-league football club for a little while. And while I was doing That's that, cool. I had health issues and ended up 
in hospital for a while. Um, and while I was there, I was like, I need something different to do. So I set up a website selling different gifts and gadgets and that sort of thing. And then I think, I, I think it would be about six months later, I went to a trade show at the NEC at Birmingham and just wheeling around. Well, I wasn't wheeling, I was walking around then. And walking around and looking at different products. And there was a stand selling vibrating rubber ducks. A little bit bigger than this one that's in my hand, because I always have one on my desk. But yep. it was like that, which is the keyring version, which is a bright yellow one. And yep. I was like looking at them and it was like, oh, they're vibrating rubber ducks. They're a, they're a sex toy. I thought, really? So looking at them and then one of the lads on the stand, Dom, he said to me, he said, oh, do you want to see what else we sell? I was like, yeah, yeah. So he took me around the back of the stand, like around the curtain, and there's loads of sex ties. And he was like, I was like, oh, wow. And I just thought, that's interesting, really interesting. So Ali, my wife, and I came home, and we were talking about it. And I was like, I'm going to sell them ducks. I'll just start with the ducks. Because I just thought, I really like, I just thought they were a bit novelty, a bit daft. And then it just started from there. And it, I just, I soon closed the gift and gadget side and just started selling sex toys. And then after about two years in the industry, I realized so many of these products weren't accessible, even to me. Like I have poor hand dexterity um, and I, I struggled with the vibrations and things like that. And I just thought, let's look at why they're like this. And I would go to trade fairs and I would talk to companies. And then I just started specializing in selling products about, I would say about five years later, I started selling products that were just accessible because why should disabled people not have sex? And then I just started literally talking about sex all the time on different things and COVID hit and I decided I was so busy. It was ridiculous how busy I was over COVID, but I was getting bored at the same time. Suppose so, people didn't have anything else to do. They were like, eh, yeah. fuck it. Fuck it. And like there was orders going, but then... A combination of COVID and Brexit caused problems with supply chains. Yeah, um, right. And I was like, oh, I can't get the stock I want. And then I thought, right, I need something else to do. And I started doing some work with charities and talking about sex and disability. And then I thought, right, I'm going to do sex education. Now I want to learn to be a sex educator. Um, and now that is, I predominantly do sex education on one side and I then help sex toy companies make their products more accessible. I yep. work with some success companies like trying to bring their brand to the more aim at the disabled market because it needs to be done. Um, and I closed my store because it's just, I just didn't have the time to do it anymore. So yeah, I yeah, love, yeah. I spend so much time now just talking about sex. Educate. Yeah, like, but I know obviously you've worked with one of the the only real company in that in that space that I'm aware of is Hot Oct because I know you've done some work with them and it is it is like it's not something that I would have initially thought of in yeah thought of when I thought of accessibility of the next thing that needs to be changed but then I suppose yeah. I, I, <laughs> full disclosure I've never really looked <laughs> no and and I get I hear that all the time. Um, and especially for men, because like there's still a massive stigma around men using sex toys. And I, I do so many like sex education classes with adults, um, because I I predominantly do stuff with adults. Don't want to go in schools and talk about this thing quite yet. I I would love to do eventually going to SEN schools, but there's still so many adults that have had no sex education. My sex education was crap. I bet no, yours was. Yeah. Yep. And that's what I hear all the time. So, like, looking at the accessibility of toys, like, like you mentioned, Hogtopus, I, I do work with them, and they are fantastic at what they do. And they're always looking at developing different things. And their products are very unique as well for penis owners because they can be used with a flaccid penis, which a lot of toys can. Um, but, yeah, I, the stigma around men and sex toys is so... Huge. Can we also? I'm just gonna appreciate that you've just gone penis owners of all things you're gonna, gonna come out with penis owners. That's a new one. That is a new one, and that's definitely tickled me. Yeah, because you know that we we live in a society now where people 
can I identify as the one? <laughs> That's fair. I, I always use penis owners because some penis... I like it. I, I just didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. <laughs> fair play. Anyway, yeah. didn't mean to stop you. I just thought... I've got to point this out that that's that's not something I would have come up with. No, and it it shows how society is changing as well. I I oh, if I'd gone back two years, I would never have used that. I would have always said men. I would have always used the word yeah, phrase yeah. men. But I think me educating myself and yeah, um, dealing with a lot more sex educators, I've realised even some of my terminology would be wrong. So it just kind you kind of change it. Um, yeah. And I don't want to just do it to be politically correct. I think we need to just, again, be a bit more open about how we have these discussions. and But at the same time, not get offended if someone does use the wrong word. If I use man, yeah, I wouldn't well, yeah. want to offend yeah. anyone. So yeah. it, I think people, we, as a society, it is easy to offend. So I think we just have these open conversations. Um, and that does fall into the sex that like, conversation because you go back 20 years and like sex in the city really transformed the sex toy industry especially for women mm-hmm. um but that's never happened for men men and it, like you know um i have so many male friends who will not use sex toys on themselves they'll use them with the partners wives but they won't yeah. use them on themselves i was gonna say uh, i'm gonna be fully transparent i mean i've, I've spoken about it before but i've never considered you using one because i just i just haven't looked into it it's not necessarily like i have anything against using them. i think it's that like you said it's that systemic thing of you think of sex toys and you think women you mm. don't think or yeah you don't think oh okay well, what is there for me like i don't know it's uh, maybe maybe it's just me maybe i am just being naive but yeah <laughs> i think if you don't go looking for it it's 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 not something you see like like years ago you would have like men's magazines like Zoom, Nuts, FHM. You would have probably seen if they'd still been on the go, you would have seen them in there. But yeah. now, unless you really go looking for it, you're not going to find it because the Anne Summers is predominantly aimed at the female market, so you're not going to go in there and potentially find some of them ties male for ones. penis owners. But then you've got there is so many like ones out there that are quite like interesting and good. Like I said there's the hawk to push range, but then you've got products now that the technology side is so good that you've got toys that you can hook up to your pawn, hook up to your VR headset. They'll work with your VR headset and interact. That's fucking mental. <laughs> what the fuck? I, I no, I was going to say there is one somewhere on my unit, but it, it literally, it's you know what a flashlight is. Yeah. Right. So you put basically a version of a flashlight into that and it will interact with what you're watching and it'll do up to 260 strokes a minute that's bonkers or it literally when you you can have it so you can put the headset on you put the pawn on and it will move to what you're seeing on the screen that's that's actually crazy (laughs) that's that's mental i didn't even Wow, <laughs> just have no words. Have absolutely but, no words. Just, <laughs> but it's one of them the products fuck? I just find. I think it's amazing. The technology is amazing. You've got to live in a house, I would say, where you know you're not going to have anyone walk in. If you've got the headset on and the, <laughs> the headphones, and you're there, and you know someone walks Crack in the room, up. you're yeah. not going to know they're there. Just, just <laughs> you can see, just see it, can't you? You just see it. So a wonder again, completely oblivious. Yeah, um, but the technology is changing sex toys so much because, like, you know, they're so interactive now with phones and themselves. You know, you can interact them across the across the globe. Basically, you can if yeah. your partner's halfway around the world, you can still use a toy on them if or control that toy that they're using. That that's cr- I never even thought about that. Never even thought about like long long distance and using like. Uh, Wi-Fi connected toys. That's yeah. Never thought about that. And nine months so, of- like some of these products are so accessible for disabled people because yeah. obviously you don't have to worry about the buttons. You can, you if you can put it there yeah. yourself and you can then yeah. use your phone. They're great like that. 
yeah that, that's where the technology for me needs to be used more we need to make use that technology to make products more accessible yeah i mean completely completely different area but it's like i'm a proper pro smart technology like if i could hook my entire house up to google i would yeah. but that's purely because at, from an accessibility point of view it's a lot easier just saying it rather than trying to fumble around trying to get to the light switch I, yeah. so it's the same 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 premise i i guess um, yeah and and the toys and it's like looking at the toys i then start looking at how that technology can be used potentially for something else because mm -hmm. as well um it's mind blowing where it's going. It's like obviously you see stuff online of the AI technology that's being put into sex dolls now, and like some of these dolls are like four and a half upwards thousand pound, but they are getting to close to. They talk, they they don't move themselves so much, but you can have a conversation with them. It's frightening, really. It, that is quite yeah. scary, and that does that does worry me from a human perspective of going. Are we just going to get to a point where everyone's just like, nah, I'm not going to have partners. I'm just going to have, just, just, just going to crack on with the doll. <laughs> you see these like documentaries of people, especially in America, where they literally have a house full of like 20 sex dolls and like they put them in the car to take them out. I've just, I've just seen the story this morning. Of, I can't think which place it is, but there's somewhere where there's been a surge in people buying sex dolls to put in the car to avoid the congestion charges in that area. Because you can put like you've that you've got someone in the car with you, so you can go into different lanes and avoid the cut the charges. That's brilliant. That's fantastic. <laughs> I I I I approve of that. That is that is just that is just <laughs> clever. That's just being clever. <laughs> That's brilliant. But I know we had a discussion when we were at Nadex. Like you were saying that the American market isn't as forward uh, as far forward as the British market is. No, the, there's still companies over there. The there is some that are moving forward but there's others that aren't there's companies that i've worked with and they still feel really reluctant to put disabled people in their marketing for example because they're worried it will damage the brand it's crazy because like some of these yeah. products lend themselves to actually fall into the disabled market really well and they sell really well i've sold them aiming at the disabled market but when you talk to the company themselves they're really reluctant to make it or even marked it slightly as being a disabled product. It's, and I get that a little bit, um, but then they just don't realise the strength of the purple pound and how yeah, they... opening these conversations. And the end of the day, we could all become disabled at some point. So why not look yeah. at that? Yeah, and it's it's that it's that whole like you said, it's that fear of if we market something as disabled, that's what people are going to view it as. And like I think you're right in terms of it's more showcasing that it's not necessarily built for disabled people. It just lends itself to it. It's yeah. like there are so many pieces of equipment that I've got that aren't actually registered as a disability piece of equipment, but it works. I mean, for God's sakes, how, how many litter pickers do you see disabled people using? What was the original design of that? To pick up litter, not to help a disabled person. <laughs> Yeah, you, you've got an index and you've got the helping hand stand. Yeah. That's, yeah. Same thing. It's, the same. it's, exactly it's literally the same thing. just a versatile product, which everyone but, wants. But the, you, it's keeping it right, though, because the flip side is you will get companies that will market it, the disabled market just to make more money as well. Um, you know, you know yourself, you go and you look at something, as soon as you put the word disabled near it, it does bump mm. the price up. So yeah. it's finding that happy medium. No, you're, you're completely right. Completely right. Is that, like I said, is that argue, the argument of why do, why do we have to pay more? And it's, I hate it because people will come out with the shit like, oh, it's because we're a smaller audience or it's because we're a captive audience. And I'm like, it still doesn't change the cost of which it costs to make. No. No, it's like when you go to a hotel and they charge more for an accessible room. It's oh, like, it, mm. Although I have, I have tested the theory a couple of times. If you book a hotel and you book a standard room, I mean, you're playing risk because you haven't booked the right room. But you know that the property's got an accessible room. If you rock up and go, oh, can, is there any chance of me getting the 
accessible room. Nine times out of ten, they'll go, yeah, all right, there you go. Because <laughs> they'll go, shit, yeah, he is in a wheelchair. Like That's the hilarious thing. It's like, no, I'm not just being a dickhead. I, I actually need this room. My look, if I tried that, I would go the one day every room was full. Mm. Nadex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> weirdly, weirdly, Nadex wasn't as hard to get a room this year than it was last year, and it was busier mm. this year. It was weird. Yeah. Don't don't get that. Oh, I just stayed in a standard room because I was like, I'm only going to be there at night, so I'll crack on. Most of the time, the only thing I really need the accessible room for is the shower. So I was like, yeah. oh, I'll, I'll, I'll just suffer for a day. <laughs> 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 the things we do. But, yeah. Yeah. But then back, like they say, you, you go back to the sex education side. Um, like you say, if yours was crap, were you in a mainstream school, Charlie, as well? Like yeah, 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 yeah. Mine was, mine was crap. Mine was literally, this is how you put a condom on. This is the basic biology of how X, Y, Z works. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was literally the strength of it. And then you can imagine someone sat there like me and going... Well, I ain't gonna be fucking able to do that, am I? <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This is, and this is this was like my experience. I, I like I say, I think our sex education at school would have been similar time to how I was diagnosed. And then I look back now, and again, it was just condom on a banana. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and... well, we established the other day that apparently everyone in my 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 group was like. Purple dildo. Why was it a purple one? Like, why's it always got to be a purple one? Yeah, but I bet it wasn't even one that looked... It would just been a, a plastic cylinder, was it? It wouldn't have even yeah. looked... Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I, I get some sex education companies will reach out to me and they'll say, oh, can can you get us some that look realistic so we can take... Because, like, then if you're sticking it on something that just looks like a bloody door, it's, like, pointless. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and I look back now, and I think most of my sex education came from lads mags, def- lads mags and porn. Um, yeah. And you talk to most lads, porn is where they get most of their sex education yeah. from, and that isn't a good thing. Um, but I talk to so many adults, got and I'm ranging like from twenty to seventy year old, and their sex education was either non-existent, similar to ours, or they were told. You don't need to know this because you'll never have sex. Oof. And I hear that mm. so much. And it's shocking. Like yeah. absolutely disgusting how people can say that. And I had someone not long back saying, I think they were just out of school and they'd been told the same. It's like, hang on, that's still going on. That shouldn't be happening. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, uh, you, you, I'm sure you know working in the industry, but literally the first question anyone asks me as soon as they find out I've got a partner, they're like, oh my God, like you guys do it. And I'm like, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do I... you expect me to say? <laughs> <laughs> or like the other one I used to do when I was little, little, not little, ugh, um, when I was younger, it was uh, people would ask, and it'd be, if it was a girl, I'd just jokingly turn around and go, do you want to find out? Point blank. <laughs> this is it. You know, it's... it's. I think, I don't know if la- disabled lads get it as much as lasses, but... Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I get it. And the one I always got, once people knew what I did for a living, once they knew I sold sex ties, the first thing they would always ask my wife was, do you use them all? Have you tried them all? And it's like... <laughs> And like product the first testing, time you get after, it's like yeah, you know, yeah, of course I have. But then you just kind of think again, really? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You're you, like all the questions you can ask me, right? That yep. is the one you can go to first. What is the okay? You you fed into this one. What is the weirdest question you've been asked? Um, I, I I've spoke about this recently, and it is: can I give myself a blowjob? Uh, I don't. I, I don't even have any words to follow that up with. Where did they learn biology? Well, because I'm so flexible. Yeah. Um, this is when you turn around to me and go, "I can." I can, I can pull my legs around. My, well, I, I've not done it for a long time. I, age maybe has got the better of that. But when I was like in my twenties, teens, twenties, I could easily put my legs around my head, and people would then just assume because I was like that. Surely you can uh, give yourself a blowjob. 
and I've got I've just been asked it quite a few times, not for a while, but yeah, it used to come often. God, and I must admit as well, somebody, I mean, as a sex educator, I'd imagine you get some weird and wonderful questions anyway. Yeah, um, you know, if it's, I think if it, if the one, I say weird questions, I get a, people come to me with who feel lost about like their sex lives and they'll you know and then if it's someone who hasn't had any education they still don't know simple things for example you know can you get pregnant having anal sex and things like that so you kind of got to draw that out and talk yeah. about it and it, it's always an interesting conversation because again the internet plays into these things and a lot of I think now it's a bit easier because people can go onto social media or onto Google and Google these things. The only problem is sometimes you get wrong information. Um, yep. And I think one of the weirdest questions I ever got around sex ties was someone who messaged me to know with a pair of Kegel balls, if you had to put one in or both of them. So she, re- I had this picture of this woman just walking around with one hanging out <laughs> and it's like no no you've got to put both in. and that was when i was quite new to the industry like now she maybe would have got a different answer i'd have maybe been, you know um <laughs> oh, yeah it, it's one of them i think people my my job either kills a conversation or it will keep a conversation going for hours yeah, I mean, me, we, we've already said, us two, we could sit on here for hours just chatting about, one, our life experiences, but there are so many things I'm like, what a different route of work. Like, most of us, like, oh, what do you work in? Marketing, what do you work in? I work for the council, I want, I do this, I, I, I work in finance. You're like, nah, I sell sex, sex toys and educate disabled people on sex. It's like, oh, all right, okay. Yeah, that's definitely a little bit more interesting than, so this quarter we scored this... <laughs> Yeah, when I, yeah, and I look at my job, I love it. I absolutely adore it. There is some days where I think, I wonder what it would be like to have a normal job, like you say, something in finance, and then I just think, no, nah, fucking chance. <laughs> no, nope. doesn't involve any pink, whereas at least with sex toys, I got a chance. Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine me fitting into that environment, to be honest. Yeah, I think you, you you'd last about a week. You'd last about a week and be like, no, nah, no, nah, I can't do it. I can't, I can't. I'd either be so bored, or I would say something that offended someone, because yeah. I I do struggle with having a filter because working in that industry, oh, you can't. The first time I ever went to a trade fair, um, in the sex toy industry, and I I walked through the doors, and there was literally wall to wall porn, like porn stars everywhere, then porn on the screens. Got like women in cages. It was just like wow. And then from that day on, I just had no filler. And it's funny because people will ask me questions, and especially friends who are like similar age, and they'll message me and say, "Oh, do you know what this is? Like a term or whatever?" And I'll be like, "Yeah, of course I do." And yeah. I'm like, oh. And then they'll send me pictures thinking it'll like offend me. It'll be something like a porn clip they've seen on uh, Pornhub or something. And they'll be like, "Oh, this is shocking. Have you seen this?" And they're like, "Yeah." Yeah, it's whatever, and it's like, I, yeah, it's hard to have a filter now. As well, like people, people are interested in. There's, there's no limits to what people are into. So, like, you are just gonna get weird stuff. But I can imagine as well, not from what people are thinking, but like from a sensory perspective, going to a like sex toy porn trade fair. I, I after about three hours, I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't know how I'd, yeah, I don't know how I'd be. <laughs> I think you kind of shut off to it and like I I struggled shutting off. I was always be hyperactive anyway and that and now discover going through like getting a ADHD diagnosis and I realise why I'm like that now. But I would I could go from one minute like kind of blanking it out, but then it's like, oh and I I just get drawn <laughs> to something, you know, like a magpie gets drawn to something. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I always and I love listening about people's different experiences, like talking about like kinks and fetishes. And, and I think as long as it's nothing illegal, 
I love listening to what people are into because I just find it fascinating and each to their own. It's just amazing. I mean, obviously that, you can't name different. any names, but what's the what's the one that shocked you the most? I find I find the whole furry thing a little bit strange. I find it fascinating, but I do find it a little bit strange. Furry thing? So where people dress as um, animals. Uh, okay. So they wear yeah. costumes, so they'll like, dress as cats yeah. and dogs. Yeah, and like that. yeah. Um, the adult baby thing. I, I've yeah. never really completely got my head around either. Yeah, that is another weird one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does it was a bit talking to someone like you you do sit there and go I feel like I'm quite beige in the, in the grand <laughs> scheme of things but it's, I like I find I love I spoke to someone before and they, they have a tickling fetish and I find that fascinating and like they, they exp- um, and then they explain about the difference and then other people have tickling kinks because then there's like because there is a difference between a fetish and a kink, and you hear it and it's like wow, and it explains so much about a person. And like also talking to people, for example, who've got sex addictions and things like that, I just I just love to hear people's yeah. views and like the because it was like stories. Um, that's what we're here for at the end of the day to learn from others. Yeah. And this is why I do this. Um, yeah. but it's like Terry Crews. Terry Crews had a porn addiction. I found that really interesting. Yeah. Because, like, not many people speak about it. No. Um, and it is such a prevalent thing now. Um, I, I think there's a lot of people who will probably have porn addictions who maybe don't realise they have a porn addiction or mm. will admit to it. But it's so easy to obtain now. When When I was growing up, it was either VHS, DVD, or magazine. It, the, like the internet was a new thing yeah. when I was in my teens, and that. But now you literally can pick your phone up, and it's there. It's instant. Yeah. And anything you want as well. That that is the other thing you can find it. Um. I, the porn industry for me at the moment is it needs to be it needs to change. There's 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 a lot of part. If it wasn't viewed by so many kids, it wouldn't be so bad. But the porn out there isn't good for teenagers to be watching and learning yeah. from. That's the big problem. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It doesn't do us any favours, really. No, and when you, you're hearing stories now of kids as young as like eight, nine seeing it, you've got to worry what that effect that is. If they're seeing things like choking and, and hitting and things like that in porn, which, you know, there is a massive problem, especially with the choking at the moment. And you see videos on TikTok about lads talking about it and how they like doing it. It's We need to have the conversations of why young men are getting drawn to it so much. We need to... And I, I, I think a lot of the problem is the sex education is so poor and we're not talking about these things. That at the moment, such... The conversation around sex education is quite prevalent. There's MPs wanting to have it changed and things like that and say, no, we shouldn't be talking about things like anal sex and bondage in classrooms. I get the argument, but I think the worry is if we don't have the conversations, you've got to make it age like it's got appropriate. To, age appropriate. But if they don't learn from someone who's educated, be a teacher, be someone like myself who goes into colleges and such, they're going to learn from the internet, and that isn't the best way. Yeah, I think as well, by by limiting what we can educate, like someone like you, so let's say someone like you goes into a school or a college, by limiting what you can educate them on, then you're going to leave gaps in their knowledge, then they're going to go seeking stuff on the internet, and that's where it's going to go wrong. Whereas if you go, if, if the governing body says to you, right, there's no holds barred, just don't talk to them about anything utterly ridiculous, they're going to come out of that and go because they're also eventually they're going to realize as well that you're you're more comfortable than any other individual they've ever spoken to about talking about the topic so they'll eventually they'll take probably about 20 minutes to warm up and go oh actually like i can i can ask anything i like and but that's such a freeing experience to be like okay 
or like even giving them the opportunity to ask it on a one-to-one basis they might not want to yeah. be like sir can i put say this because no one really would want to do that and when i'm thinking back to when i was 16 i'm like there is not a chance not a chance i would do that but, um, would you, yeah. would you have found it easier? Because I get this asked this question a lot about why is there such a lack of male sex educators, and especially in schools. And I, I, a lot of men don't feel comfortable going into schools and talking to teenagers about it. But would you have felt more comfortable talking about it to a man than you would a woman? T- uh, probably, t- be- probably because I would, uh, my naive sixteen-year-old brain would be like, oh, well, they're going to be able to relate a lot more to me and help me understand me as a as a as a penis owner um as to like what what i need to be watching out for what what's possible what's not possible what's a good idea what's a bad idea um and and so then yeah but then also from that i suppose any any sex educator because they're going to be well educated on the topic they're going to be open about the topic then that makes the conversation a lot more open where so if you've just got a science teacher going, oh, we're going to do a module on sex education. You can tell they're really on uncomfortable, really on edge. And I think as well, because of all the horror stories you hear from both male and female, there's probably that element of wanting to educate them, but then also not wanting to overstep the boundary. It's, yeah, it's a very tricky, tricky scenario to, to be in, I think. But yeah, no, to that- answer your to answer your question, I think I would have felt more comfortable. Obviously, there's the added bonus with you of you being in a similar situation to myself. So I would have been like, oh, shit, like I can actually ask questions that I'm like. So for real, how how does it work with a wheelchair? Like, How does that all, yeah. how does that all come about? Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons that eventually I'd like to go into it, like SEN colleges more so, I think, because I think we if it's it's find someone you can relate to i had no one i could relate to and growing up there was no one really disabled on the telly you certainly didn't see anyone disabled in porn unless it was fetishized and that kind of is nugget. the same now don't, don't get me started on nugget porn fuck you know if i had a pound every time that was mentioned to me in secondary school like guys i'm not here like, i don't know what you want me to say yeah it's and because you don't see that representation, you can't relate to it. Um, the, there's a company I absolutely adore, um, Make Love Not Porn, and they their thing is, it's not porn, it's real life sex. And the people who submit videos to that platform, they're all like done at home, they're all amateur and things like that. But there is actually one couple on there where he is in a wheelchair. And it was um, the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, this is brilliant. Um, And that is the kind of thing we need to see rather than, like you say, the whole thing around Nugget Pond. You know, it's not, you just don't see it. You just need to see something that you can relate to and think, do you know what? Yeah, that shows how you can have a loving sexual relationship. Yeah. Yeah, and the other the, the other stereotype, um, and not to out, it's fair, it's not even out in general either. But not it's that whole other thing of particularly being in an interabled relationship. I'm gonna call it that. If if you don't want me to call it that, that's just what I'm gonna identify it as so, for the purpose of the conversation. Um, but it, yeah, for in an interabled relationship, they it's that whole thing as well of like the the able bodied part of it. Are they losing out because they're dating someone who's disabled so are they you're losing out on their sexual experience because of dating someone in a wheelchair my argument is we can do shit you can't <laughs> so that's my argument <laughs> yeah um, I, I completely agree i i and i've learned over the last i would say two or three years talking to more disabled people about it i think that i would say the consensus of opinion by most people is disabled people have better sex lives and that is because they have to think about it more. They can laugh about it. I, I think that, like, one of the questions I always get asked is, what is the one piece of advice That's what I was going to ask you. And that is <laughs> to laugh. That is to be yeah. willing to laugh when something goes wrong. I have dislocated so many joints during sex. And, like, the first time I did it, it was like, oh, shit. 
and like yeah. you just laugh about it. and then I just realised now I just I just gotta laugh about it. Yeah. Even even like things that aren't really sexual, like in the sense the first yeah. time I dislocated my hip putting my pants on, I'm s I was I was at Ali's <laughs> mum and dad and I was like shouting trying to get Ali's attention. I was like, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. She was like, What? I said, You can come in, no one else can. I'm I'm I've got my pants halfway around my legs and I'm, my hips dislocated and I'm stuck. <laughs> And it was like, and yeah. I was just howling, laughing. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. you can't just laugh it off. Yeah. I think one of the, because to obviously not in the same field, but um, one of the big anxieties for me was like, one of the bits that I need assistance with is putting my shoes on. When me and Gina first started dating, bear in mind I was 18, I was terrified of going to Gina, being quite vulnerable, going, can you put my shoes on? Realistically, after the second time I did it, she was like, yeah, what? Like, I don't, I don't know why I expected this to be a big thing. She was like, "Yep." I think, in fact, I think it followed by, "I'll take them off for you as well." <laughs> I think, I think that was what followed, if I remember rightly. <laughs> but it's having them conversation, and like you say, being in an interable relationship, it does make it. I think sometimes you kind of wonder how the rest of society judges you um and i th- i i think been since i've been in my wheelchair i've maybe thought about that a little bit more than i used to um but i can see now as i've got older i think you've just got to kind of like fuck it, it's no one else's business At the end of the day it's what's mm, yeah. best for you you too and yeah that's how you've got i think so much in life has become my mantra is just fuck it. Like, you know, no one else's yeah. problem. Yeah. Mine. Yeah, it's funny because that's that, that, like we've just spoke about it. The majority of the time, that's what the conversation revolves around when someone who's not been exposed to disability, the first place their brain goes to is. So let's talk about the bedroom. Yeah. But that's because people always go, oh, like, why, why are people this weird? And I'm like, it's just because they're curious. Because be it that to everyone, like, because. I agree with the sentiment that, like, you wouldn't ask a normal person, so how do you guys do it? But um, but then again, it's just people being inquisitive because we're something different. There's something that they don't come across every day. Like, if they rock up to my, to my sister and go, so how do you guys do it? It's going to be pretty much the same shit that everyone else does. Yeah. That's the thing. It's different. Everyone challenges. Everyone wants to know about something that's different. It's why yeah, and I think as a society, we forgot about that. I think... I, you know, you kind of see things on social media sometimes, and people say, "Oh, they don't like people asking about their disabilities and things like that." And I and I get that you you maybe don't want some privacy depending on your circumstance, and there's a time and a place. But if someone comes up to me and asks me a question, I would say ninety nine percent of the time I don't mind answering it. But not everyone's like me, you know. Yeah, with me and you're similar. You're kind yeah. of happy to talk about these things. Some people yeah. aren't, and it's gauging that I think before you do ask. So yeah. if someone wants to ask, ask away. Like, yeah, yeah. My advice is always the same. If you're an individual that isn't comfortable educating someone on a topic, or you're just having a bad day and don't want to talk about it, point them in someone. Point them in the direction of someone that is willing to talk to them about it. Like enough people are on social media now, you can literally go see this guy, message him, and I will yeah. happily sit there, message away, and answer any questions you got because that's that's the position I'm in. But it's that whole thing I think we spoke about, and it's one of the things I've often spoke about on this podcast of like my fear is if that you're if that individual, so someone who's quite aggressive with saying no, if that's their first introduction to disability, unfortunately, people are naive, and that's going to be the brush that the rest of us are brushed with. Yeah, and I think we've we've learned we've lost sorry the art of debate and conversation as well, mm. and that's. As I said to you, like I'm going to launch my own podcast shortly. It will be out very soon, and uh, you know that. And this is one of the things I want to talk about. Is I'm I love to learn, like be like I say, from other sex educators that do different things to me, or someone who's talking about like fetishes and things like that. I just want to learn. I love to learn and love to listen. Um, but there'll be certain things that I maybe don't agree with, but I still want to know what their views are on it, for yeah. example. And I just think we've lost that in society. It's too yes. easy. Like I said, it's too easy to get offended. It's, and I, 
I probably offended people, not on purpose, just by asking something wrong. Um, yep. I will always apologise if they are offended, but I just feel we just need to relax as a society. And like, yeah. like you say, if, I think if, I think it's agree. Like a lot of the time, we need to lean into agree to disagree. Like it's yeah. okay. Like like just because you and a friend or a colleague or whatever agree disagree on one topic, that doesn't ruin your entire relationship. Just so I have, it's like. You, I like bananas. You don't like bananas. It's the same thing. Like I don't know what people want, want us to do. Like it's that whole thing of unless you agree with me on absolutely everything in my belief system, we can't we can't get along. Yeah, and the world would be boring if it was like that. You know. Yeah. It's like it can be little things. It's like when my wife and I met, we very different tastes in music. Like you know, I, I was all listening to rock, heavy metal, things like that. Ali very much into pop and like boy bands, but as we like you know been together as long as we have, we go to so many music gigs. But we will go to things that I like, and we'll go to things that Ali likes. I mean, yeah. you just compromise. But yeah, you know that's how you do it. Yeah, that's that's life. That is yeah. that is life. It's just it is. Uh, one question I do want to ask because obviously you brought it up earlier that you you do want to eventually get into uh, SEN schools and bridge the conversation of um, sex education. This might sound like a really broad question, and I'm happy to drill down if you need me to. But like, what would be what What do you think is going to be your approach with that? Because obviously, in an SEN school, there are so many different variations of need, um, and so many different things to consider. Have you given any thought to how you're going to bridge that? This is one of the reasons I haven't done it yet. Um, I think it's getting it right, and I worked with some great sex education companies. Um, and we've had many discussions about how to get SEN schools right. Because like you say, you've, you've got a dif- difference between physical disability, learned di- disabilities, um, and obviously neurodiversity as well. That that was the one of the things I've only, would say, discovered in the last 18 months, two years, is about, back to the sex toy thing, is how some people who have certain neurodiversities uh, struggle with the smells and the vibrations in sex ties. And I, I'd never give that a thought. And then, so I've learned about that now. And um, mm. so to answer that question, it's like, it's going to take a long time to get it right. And yes, the government can say, right, we want you to teach about this. So for example, oh, we want to teach you about consent. Consent is still a difficult thing to like break down into, like, again, someone who has a physical disability who has no learning difficulties on your diversity will deal with consent a lot easier than someone who has autism, for example, or Asperger's. So it's, I think it's going to take more than yeah. me to do it. It's going to take a lot of people to get it right. Um, but it's having them conversations and not everyone's it's, open to that. That is the problem. Yeah. You get parents who kind of feel, Oh, I don't want you talking to my child about that, but it's the statistics are that if, you don't talk about it, they're more likely to get abused. And that is, yeah. we shouldn't yeah. be in that society. And and that's something me and you agreed on the other day. It's a hard one because I think, because sex is such a, I don't even know the right word, it's such a big topic in terms of it's yeah. considered very, very adult, although my argument is we all do it. So like it's whether you engage in it all the time or you only do a bit of it, you're all going to engage in it in some form. Um, and it's that whole thing of get, being given the license to get it wrong. Because like any business, you start a business or a project, you're going to get it wrong the first time. No, yeah. like Steve Jobs didn't produce the perfect Apple uh, laptop the first time he did it. Same goes for anyth- anything like this. And I think that's the biggest hard thing in consultancy is like there's this expectation of if you're a consultant in a field, you you obviously you have got to be a certain level of an expert in the topic but you can get shit wrong or you can go do you know what i've never thought about that before let me go and find out for you and i'll come back yeah i i sometimes get asked um questions when i'm doing like sessions um i i've run sessions in the past with one of the sex education companies and we call them what i wish i'd known and we'll ask and they're always aimed at adults and quite often it'd be anywhere between 18 and 80 that age group that are there if someone asks me something that I really don't know, I'll just say, look, give me a day. 
I'll go find out and then I'll get back to you um, and I'll email that person because I would never want to give the wrong advice and I know that many people in the industry one way or another that I know I can find out what I need to know if I don't know and I, I don't profess to, I know a lot but I don't profess to know everything yeah um, and I think you're always going to be learning because there's always new things now especially around gender identity and things like that it's all it's it's evolving all the time so i think yeah. you've always got to and again looking at my age i think it's looking at how even wording someone will send like a friend of mine who is i think that does 14 15 and he'll send me things and say oh do you know what this means because he doesn't know and he's heard like the daughter talk about it so he'll ask me and it's like uh, I think it's this. And then the whole thing of emojis, it'll throw at me again. And it's like, so I'm always learning. So again, yeah. this is where we've got to bring it into the context of going into S going into SEN schools and colleges is you've got to be up on this because you don't know still what they know, like what they've already taught themselves. Yeah, it is. It's a really, like, I'd lo I, like I'm looking forward to watching your journey on it because it is something that I definitely think needs to happen. Because as you say, the, the the percentage is R because they receive less education on that topic. The the rates speak for themselves in terms of abuse, and it's because they are classed as unfortunately they're classed as vulnerable individuals. I... There's, there's so much work to be done in the area, be it the sex education side, the sex toy side, and just then also having open conversations in the media um about sex and disability because i still see it as probably the last big taboo i think yeah i mean as society yeah. is we can't we can't address it so i think we need to and i will happily talk for hours about it if needs be but i think again there's so i i speak to so many men especially who have acquired disabilities and just feel that that's it, their sex life is over. And that because they've had no one talking at the hospital about it, doctors, partners. So they just feel isolated. So we need to have these conversations yeah. around that as well. It is. It's, it's, it's well, I've lost my train of thought now. Um, it's that whole thing of there's too much to do in one space. I think that's the issue. There's just too much to tackle. I just don't know where where you'd even start. I because the other thing I was gonna just getting around this whole because I, I I've done content surrounding my sex life and everything else, but then like we all know that if you don't get the thumbnail right, the content's not gonna do well. So leaning into that, I obviously for one my thumbnail has got Gina in a thong posed, and um, basically I remember putting it in a cerebral palsy Facebook group. Obviously having cerebral palsy. Half of the comments were people going, oh, my God, thank God someone said it or thank God someone's done a piece on it. And then half of them were people like literally actively angry at me for posting it, but purely angry at the thumbnail. Nothing else. I was like, and the one person challenged me, I was like, did you get consent for this photo? And I'm like, what do you think? <laughs> going, <laughs> oh, it's just... It is, it's, honestly. It, and again, it's that thing of where I think where you've got to be careful having the conversation around again is how certain parts of the media and society will twist what you're saying as well to make it yeah. look taboo and worse. You know, you see you see programs around sex on like Channel Four and Channel Five, and sometimes they're done really well. So many times they're done really badly. And they just sensationalise it because they're just wanting that one, like you said, a thumbnail, they're wanting a line or whatever to put on social media to say, oh, look at this, this is this is grim or whatever. Yeah. Um, rather than saying, right, you know, sex and disability, it's a normal thing. Let's just talk about it. It's, yeah, yeah. why sensationalise it? The main reason, the main thing, the main reason I spoke about it was, one, because no one really was, no one in, that I was seeing was doing it. But two, it was to show you, people of my age like because there's a common thing i can I, I even know from being when i was younger there was a common thing of like that's the unreachable for me like because naturally i think most of people go through this phase of 
feeling very unattractive and feeling very like self-conscious and not they're not going to be able to achieve that thing so like it's me going look guys it's possible i i I of all people thought it wasn't but here i am um but yeah so that's that was the main reason i did it was to show to up to particularly as you say particularly in the male side of things to show i was talking about this on another podcast and obviously there's a lot of conversations surrounding masculinity but i think it links in so much with um sex and everything else is that thing of like still being able to do that thing that's seen as overly masculine and I, that's yeah. a that's that's a good and a bad thing like i'm not saying that that should be the way it's viewed in society but it was showing that you can still be the male in the relationship quote unquote even if that's not really a thing let's be honest just if you guys like each other great let's just leave it at that <laughs> yeah i think the whole toxic masculinity thing is oh it's another conversation that is so long to be had um and again though that goes back to the porn conversation i think that is ha- playing a really negative part in that and we yeah and we do need to talk about it but again like you say i think people get curious and going back to the tv but i was just saying it was programs like the undateables that kind of caused some of them issues with that as well mm-hmm. <laughs> On the fence. On a, I, I mean, I've had George George Dow on the show. Who, oh, um, George is brilliant. Yeah, so he was on the show. And we obviously, I I was on the fence with the whole thing because the undateables in itself, I appreciated what he was trying to do, but it was just my opinion was done badly. Like I was yeah. approached for the show it, hilariously. My swing team was approached for the show, and my coach basically told everyone to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, yeah, it, first of First of all, they're in the middle of training. Second of all, ill. <laughs> I, I kind of got what they were trying to do with the programme, but they just did it, like you said, they did it in a bad way. Like, yeah. You talk to George about it, and he has quite a positive spin on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just, but... I just, there's something about it, because it's, it's that whole, it's leaning into that we're different. That's yeah. that, I think that's the bit I don't like. It's not like... The undateables, you didn't include anyone in that that was able bodied. It was purely just if you were disabled, you were classed as undateable. Yeah, and that again, you know, it's it's that whole thing I have kind of in some of the lessons I do. You a lot of people assume that disabled people only date other disabled people as well. Mm, how many times have I been asked that? Oh, is, is your girlfriend disabled? No, she's a bit wacky at times, but no. <laughs> Yeah, like, he... I always love giving them the mental image of, right, so let's say me and Gina have the exact same condition, yeah? So if I go, babe, I can't reach the jam, we ain't reaching the jam. That's it. There's, there's, no, there's no question about it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I just love where people's minds go sometimes. Um, and again, try not to be offended by it, because like you said, you know, you get asked the foot that like you say, can you have sex? Do you have sex? Mm. <laughs> I do get the inquisitiveness, but you just, yeah. I just love that poor, poor Gina gets most of it. It's always followed with, is he any yeah. good? Like, is it worth it? Like, it's like, fuck. But out. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, you, you want, the, the only probably way you'll get it is, how the hell have you pulled Gina? That's probably what you'll get, Mark. Oh, yeah. I mean, I get that from family members, so that's nothing new. But, like, yeah, it is that whole thing. Of, or, like, well done, well done, Gina, for taking on the poor disabled boy. Yeah. That's, a, that's the other one. Or, like, yeah, or, like, I've had it before. You're quite good looking for a disabled person. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think... I, I, I think with the pink chair mind as well, though, I think I've drawn another <laughs> curveball to people because yeah. I think a lot of people assume I'm gay now. Yeah, well. yeah. I, I was going to say that's probably a stereotype that you get given. And I love the curveball. Like, no, no, no. Nope. I'm straight and also I'm a sex educator. Yeah. I, I just, I, I, I see people because, like, me and Ali were joking about it the other day. We were, we were in London last week and. We've we've never had this, and we've me and Ali have been together over twenty years, but we've never we've never had it until the last I would say six months, 
where we've gone out to eat and the amount of times we've been asked if we want to split the bill. And this has happened more since I've been in my wheelchair. So I don't know if people don't as- assume that we're a couple yeah. or if yeah, she's my that's, parent or yeah. what. I've no, never that, had that until... No, that's a common thing. Like People always assume that... Gene, well, obviously, there's the added bit of us both being ginger. Everyone assumes we're brother and sister. But there yeah. is always the assumption that we're not a boyfriend and girlfriend. We are... Gina's my carer and I'm pay her to be there. Yeah. Uh, and that's the assumption. Like, yeah, it is it's really weird. It's like yeah, or we've had people come up to us. These people have never even spoke to us. Like it would be bar staff. Never spoke to us, never served us, never don't have any interaction with us. And then point blank just come up to us and go, Are you two brother and sister? And I'm like, was it was it was it the PDA that made you raise the question? <laughs> Yeah, that's I. That's just it is. It's just weird. It is just weird. Like people just assume that we can't have partners. Yeah. Or especially, I think as well, it's, it's assumed that we can't have able-bodied partners. Yeah, and like the I, you see it more from uh, female disabled people where they're talking about where the partners are often seen as heroes. We don't really see it the other way around. So oh, Gina get Gina gets quite a lot. I guess like, there's a lot of that. Um, oh, well done you for pay taking on the poor disabled person. Yeah. I mean, as well we we've had uh, someone um, someone say like, oh, it must be nice to come away on holiday with like people around you, so you get a bit of a break from looking after Charlie. And Gina sat there like, uh, all I do is put his shoes on. <laughs> I the rest of it he does. Or like as well, what was funny was we had to drive to the location. Well, basically, we drove from uh, where I live in Kent down to Cornwall. Yeah. And so, like, the uh, people we were going, so they're like, how did you get down here? I like, expected Gina to go, oh, I drove or whatever. And, and I'm like, no, I, I, I drove. So, like, yeah. What? Wait, huh? Huh? What? I thought you were a vegetable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just like, oh, it's just. Ridiculous, but like I say, it's a whole thing of well, that's why we do what we do in terms of I'm trying to promote being young and disabled and living a normal life, and you're trying to show that disabled people do in fact fuck. Yeah, so there you go. (laughs) (laughs) That's definitely go. That's definitely a social media clip right there. That is definitely a social media clip, is that Charlie? That's class. But I think yeah, it's the whole thing. Like again, but like you you use it. (laughs) <laughs> the word vegetable. Then. I love. See, I love having a joke with my mates, and we'll use language we maybe shouldn't do. Yeah. Um. But again, that is another thing people get offended very easily about, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think as well, it's like it's the word that I hate. Yeah. Absolutely detest people using. Yeah. There's um, con- and it's the there's manner, but there's context yeah. to it. Like there's context yeah. to it. Like I we're using that phrase. I never recommend it. I never never use it. It's purely for the comedic effect was the only reason yeah. I used it there. Um, but like, it is that whole thing of there are certain, it's all about context to it, but also it's all about the individual that's using it. Like in this scenario, we've both got a bit of a license to use it because we've both experienced it. Like it's not, you're not coming into this blind. Like it's that whole thing of when people try and join in and you're like, do you even know someone in a wheelchair or do you even know someone that's differently abled? No, so That's it. and I think what like one of my friends, my close, my one of my close friends, he he will quite often call me his special little friend, and like <laughs> he he like yeah, we've grown up, we've known each other like since we were toddlers, yeah. and, he, and we so he's been through with it through me like you know seeing me getting worse, and I I just find it hilarious, but I know people will get offended if they hear him say that. Yeah. It is like, I mean, my, my group of friends, I always joke, because my group of friends are one of the most diverse group of friends. You've got me, Ginger, disabled. You've got my friend who's Nigerian descent, got sickle cell anemia. You've got, I've got someone who's asexual Filipino. And it's b- 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 proper, like, alpha energy. Like, she is the strangest thing. So, like, the thing is with this friend, she will, like, she so she has no interest in having a partner or having any, like, relation to another individual but she feeds on your your stories she will ask for every detail 
no holds barred. I want to know everything you've got. And it's like, what the, what the hell? <laughs> But there I think you go. we all have a friend getting to that point like that wants to know everything. Yeah, literally, she's just like to tell me all about it, and I'm like, "Serious, like guys." <laughs> the worst thing is we lean into it now because she's very, she's really good friends with both me and Gina. So now we just we just give her exactly what she wants, <laughs> and just watch the like amazement and shock that we just committed and gone. Do you know what? I'm not even gonna flinch. I'm just gonna tell you. <laughs> But do you, do you find though with some like if you're not bothered about talking, you've got no filter, and you're like me, it just it gets to a point where they either keep asking and asking and asking, and then they get bored, or you, they'll get to a point where it's like, oh, I, I can't I can't make them feel awkward, yeah. or I, yeah, yeah, I can't match this. I've got to just <laughs> it is. But then uh, the thing is, like with me, I, I, I'm very similar to you. Of like, look, if you have got a question, I'll answer it because at the end of the day. We're all human. So, like, realistically, if you want to ask something about my sex life, I'm not going to tell you anything that's groundbreaking. You're not going to be like, whoa. Like, if it was, I wouldn't be doing the job I'm doing. Let's be honest. No. <laughs> you you would be that one porn star that is making a breakthrough. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd be holding the flag for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Um, also, but I have noticed that we're. I'm just conscious of time, and we we were we, we were conscious of that before this episode went out. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to hit you with the last question, which is: What's one piece of politically correctness that you really strongly agree with or disagree with? Remember, it doesn't have to be disability related. I mean, anything. I think that. like I think the thing. I don't know if it's politically correct. The one that annoys me. Is people talking at concerts? Like, you know, I it would be politically correct to just let people yeah. do what they want, but fuck, you know, don't pay money for a ticket and sit there talk, talking about what you've done at work when there's a decent band on. No. Yeah, I think because you mentioned it before we started recording, and I think as we both said, if you're like pointing something out about the performance, like I don't know, guitar picks going a well, someone's throwing their drums, there, like it's if that's if it's anything related to the performance, I think that's acceptable. It's if yeah. you're so. I was thinking for dinner. Um... <laughs> yeah, just no, just don't. <laughs> <laughs> have that conversation before or after the band comes on while the band's on sing as much as you want have a conversation about the shopping no <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to a gig with you and just interrogate you about all the different <laughs> sex questions I have and just watch <laughs> that's fine as long as it's someone crap that's fine <laughs> should I ask what your definition of crap is oh that, that is hard because I have a very eclectic taste in music. I will listen to a lot of things. I think we've been going to the opera. <laughs> yeah, that is my my one thing. I'm like, I can't do classical. I can do rap, country, hit, uh, 70s dance. I can do rock. Oh, actually, no, to be fair, I can't screamo. I can't, I can't, like, light screamo, I can get on board with. Heavy yeah. screamo is just, it's just, why, why, why? I don't need yeah, that. Why? I don't need I, I, yeah, I'm like that. Um, classical, I like classical music. If I really just want to chill out with a book or something, I can kind of get on board with. But opera, yep. I just don't see the point of singing a bloody <laughs> in foreign language that I don't understand. No. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm there with that. Like The thing is, I feel like with like standard songs sung in another language, you can sort of get the gist. Whereas with yeah. opera, I'm like... Pfft. One minute it's how, it sounds like she's he's singing about how much he loves her when realistically he's trying to commit he's trying to kill her. <laughs> yeah. So like it's just I don't, but I think yeah, I'm, well, I'm on board with that. I think the other the only other thing that I would say I think we've got to be careful with the political correctness thing as well is this cancel culture that we're going through at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Like that as relates a, very much to music because you hear bands now like a song from like the 80s has got changed because it doesn't fit in today's society and I think we've got to be very careful though in that yeah. I mean it's a big a big fear of mine particularly my whole brand is built on being not quite politically correct so oftentimes I'll say shit and I'm like oh fuck I shouldn't have said that um, but then again I do I do have the disclaimer of being like yeah, my name literally says it I don't know I don't know what you want 
yeah, I think that, and I love that. I, I just think that sits so well with you. Um, and I think we've just got to be, end of the day, just open to having, like I say, conversations just yeah. like this. Yeah, I mean, as well, like that, it's, it's, those conversations will eventually become easier. It's like if you're, if everyone's an open, everyone's open about it, the discussions become so much easier. Like yeah. I don't feel weird having the conversation about anything to do with sex with you because there's no there's no judgment between either party and that's what we need to get to yeah and that is why hopefully conversations like this break these barriers down it'll all, only ever be very slowly yeah. but we need to break them down that for the next generation they can talk about sex as much as they like and they won't yeah. be frowned upon and ask stupid questions and yeah. and don't worry i'm, I'm still going to do a bit because no doubt I'll do a promo clip that mentions sex and Instagram will take it down. So Probably. Well, proof proofs is in the pudding, so there you go. That's that's the other political correct thing. If you want to add another one, I hate and this is become this is because of social media, people not using the word sex and using segs and S three X and stuff like yeah. that. It drives me insane. Just say sex. But that's because the platforms don't allow it. So, like, the yeah. thing is, it's not people not wanting to use the word. It's purely because they don't yeah. want their content taken down. Like, on my yeah. second video discussing um, sex on my YouTube channel did, didn't do half as well as the first one, purely because it got taken down from the thumbnail because I didn't blur Gina's arse enough. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So social media is a bitch when it comes to discussing things like oh, this. Oh, it's ridiculous. So. I, I, People often ask me why don't I have bigger following or why I don't do as much on social media. And that is why, because I, I'm so worried about getting cancelled very quickly. Um, So it's great to come on platforms like this and talk. <laughs> Just um, leave it to me and let me take the bullet, bro. <laughs> yeah. <But> when I, <laughs> when, I, when I, I did a talk at Nadex last year, first was one of my first public speaking ones I did last year um, and it was at Nadex talking about sex and it was just so good to have them conversations in that environment um, and people came up to me and that, that's what I do get now I get quite a lot of people emailing me and saying oh my child's disabled and I don't know how to have these conversations so they will come to me and like but I know if I say the wrong thing on social media like you say I'm going to get shadow banned or my account taken off it's yeah it's yeah. crazy on the word of social media, where can people, I always give guests a chance to plug themselves. Where can they find you to speak to you about some stuff or book you for a talk or, yeah. Um, they can find me on Instagram at djw80. And my website will be launching soon. So it might be up depending when this goes out. And that you'll be able to find me at damianweatherald.co.uk. And the podcast will be launching soon, which will be called Fuck the Haters. And that okay. is... All because I just think there's too much hate out there and we need to have open and frank conversations. Don't Maybe don't agree, but stop the hate. And if someone hates them, tell them the fuck off. Yeah. And on that note, thank you so much for coming on. It's been really good. We'll definitely do an episode two because I can sit here for hours chatting to you. To do an so, two. And I already know Brooks already had you in for an episode two. So I can't not have you in. So it's just, I've got to keep up. I, I, just can't, I can't do that. This is it. <laughs> it's been brilliant charlie you too thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of the not quite podcast please make sure you follow us on tiktok and instagram to get regular updates about the podcast